Hello and welcome to my talk on how to secure container workloads for Kubernetes and ContainerD. My name is Omul Chandani. I'm co-founder and CISO CTO at Acurex. My favorite attack technique is waterhole, and I love service security and mechanical keyboards. Holy Panda switches with SA keycaps are my favorite, and I just love mechanical keyboards like anything. Let's take a look into what will be the agenda for us today. We're gonna to take a look into how containers and Kubernetes systems are built, what is policy as code, and how does policy as code help secure Kubernetes? And we're also gonna be looking into a cool demo on a GitLab pipeline to see how policy as code can be used to secure a Kubernetes cluster, which will be deployed on GKE. So let's take a look what is building containers for Kubernetes? Imagine writing a simple application code on your local environment. This application code now has to live into some sort of source code management environment. It could be any Git-based source code management environment. It could be GitHub, GitLab, Bitbucket, many others. Once your application source code is in your Git, that's when you can prepare to package this code, whether you wanna compile it or not, or you wanna just package it as it is, to prepare it to create a uh, container image. This is a stage which is otherwise also called as the build stage. Once your container image is ready, you have to be able to push this container image into a container registry. And once you do that, you need something called as infrastructure as code, such as YAML, or customize or hem chart in order to deploy this container image on a Kubernetes cluster. But how do you take all these different steps in a sequential or a synchronized manner? That's where you need to write deployment as code, which is basically your pipeline instructions, which you tell your pipeline that what stages and what jobs you should conduct in sequential fashion in order to do all these different things and then finally deploy a container image onto a, Google, onto a Kubernetes cluster. So deployment as code also is going to go and live in your Git repository, including with infrastructure as code. Once you have all these pieces together, you can then instruct your pipeline to pick up your deployment as code and use infrastructure as code to deploy the image on your Kubernetes cluster. This workflow is also called as a typical GitOps workflow. Now, what is policy as code? Policy as code is a method using which you can codify your policies that you want to enforce across your development lifecycle. It ensures consistency from policy enforcement point of view, and it's typically a very good method to deploy in automated workflows as it provides low effort enforcement. And it's a very typical uh, enforcement uh, strategy when you are adopting GitOps workflows. For example, let's say you wanna ensure that secrets are not used in your, your secrets are not being used in your environment variables. You wanna check whether you are limiting privileges or not whether there are any super user capabilities you are passing on to your container images or not. All these can be translated into policies and codified, and then you can enforce them before your clusters are built. This way, you're gonna have your bond secure use case available for your clusters. Once you do that, your cost of uh, detection is pretty low for such violations. Plus, enforcement is the best way how you can prevent yourself from various different kinds of uh, uh, attack situations. Today, we're gonna to take a look into a tool called as TerraScan. This is an open source project by Acurex. It has got 500 built-in policies. It's a very good tool to try out policy as code strategy and policy as code methodology. It's open, extensible, and it's based on open policy agent. Open policy agent is a CNCF uh, graduated project very popular and a very, very uh, accepted uh, project in policy as code space. So let's take a look into how and where all we can deploy and enforce policies into a Kubernetes 
application development and, de de and deployment scenario. In this pipeline that you're able to see, this is a typical GitOps workflow. You get opportunities at various different stages to do policy as code. It totally depends upon your requirements, your use case, your appetite, that where you want to enforce, you want to enforce at one place or you want to enforce at all the places. Every enforcement stage has certain pros and cons, has certain benefits. Mostly the benefits are tracked in cost of remediation. Cost of remediation is extremely low when you enforce your policies at a pre-commit stage. And then after that, cost of remediation is slightly higher when you do that in your build stage, a little bit more higher when you do it in the pipeline stage, but still at stage number one, two, and six, when you do it, it is extremely low as compared to doing it in runtime, but you can do it in runtime as well. You can enforce your policies in the runtime and slightly before runtime as well, if you want to do that in admission controller. But we're gonna take a look today in our demo, a simple GitLab pipeline that we're gonna be building to deploy a Python application, which is designed to be deployed as a container image on a GKE cluster. We're gonna take a look into all this tooling and we're gonna take also look, we're gonna also take a look into how TerraScan can be used as policy as code enforcement framework within the pipeline. So let's jump into the demo. Before we go into the demo, let's also take a quick look into TerraScan. So TerraScan is built on Go stack, on Go language stack. And then uh, it comes with many different uh, type of uh, features, including integration with various different uh, pipelines, various different GitOps tools, and many other capabilities. We're gonna take a look into some of the policies that we're gonna be looking into today. So TerraScan supports AWS, Azure, GCP, GitHub, Kubernetes. It supports various different infrastructure as code, uh, such as um, Terraform, it supports Customize, HEM, YAML, and a few others. Let's take a quick look into what are the Kubernetes policies that come out of the box. Policies are arranged in various different uh, categories, uh, such as by resource types. In Kubernetes, a resource is also called as a kind. So if I take a look into Kubernetes service here, there are a few policies here. If I look into say Kubernetes uh, pod, there are a number of different policies which are available here. Policies in OPA are written in a language called as Rego. Uh, these policies mostly are gonna be mapped to some kind of a security check, which will be aligned with either a best practice, a compliance standard, or a benchmark, like a CIS benchmark. So let's jump into the demo and see how these things work. So what you're seeing on the screen right now is a simple Python application. It's a Hello World application nothing uh, much into this application, simple Python file. And also what you're gonna now uh, look into right after that is the Docker file, which is written to package this application into a container image. Basically, this is a manifest file, which will be used for packaging it into a container image. So we have our Docker file, we have a Python uh, application, and you can also notice on the top left corner, there is an app.yaml file. The app.yaml file is your infrastructure's code, which is basically your deployment YAML file for Kubernetes. And it's very interesting. We're gonna be using that for performing different kinds of operations. Now, what you're seeing on the screen is your deployment as code, which is your uh, GitLab pipeline code. Since we will be using GitLab to deploy this uh, image that we're gonna be building into a GK cluster, what you're seeing on the screen is a GitLab CI. YAML file. In this YAML file, we have defined three different stages. First, a Docker build stage. Second is a scan, is a scan stage. And third is a GKE deployed stage. In these three stages, we're gonna be creating a pipeline. The first stage, which is your Docker build stage, is going to build the container image. Second stage is going to scan using TerraScan, what you're seeing on the screen. Third stage, once stage number one and two are fully functional and passed, then we'll see that the third stage will kick in, which is basically a deployment uh, stage. So we'll take a look into uh, details of you know, these stages. So first, Docker build, 
So we will be building a container image using the Docker file that we just uh, saw. Now for that, we will also be logging into GitLab's own container registry, because not only we are going to be building the container image, we will be pushing the container image also into GitLab's container registry. And that's why you can see the Docker push command being highlighted here. Once the build, once the Docker build has happened, we're gonna be doing Docker push, fantastic. And after this, once the first stage is successful, we're gonna be using Terrascan. So in Terrascan stage, we just have to pull the Terrascan as a container image, and then we're gonna be issuing a Terrascan uh, scan command. This command is going to scan the app.yaml file, which is an infrastructure's code available within this repository, and we'll be able to uh, technically perform the scan. Now, after the Terrascan stage is successful, we will be using kubectl to deploy this particular container image, which lives in the registry by now. So for that, we are just preparing our gcloud uh, uh, CLI and then environment. And then after that, we will be issuing kubectl apply. And we're gonna be just checking if the app is deployed as a service or not. So this is how your deployment uh, code looks like. This is your pipeline code. And once this code is ready, we're gonna be checking in this entire repository, which contains your deployment as code, infrastructure as code, your application code, Docker file into GitLab. As soon as we check it in into GitLab, you can see here we're doing the git commit. What's gonna happen is a new pipeline is gonna get created and we will trigger that pipeline. And what you're seeing is, I have already created this pipeline and I have triggered it multiple times. In some cases, the pipeline has failed. In some cases, the pipeline has passed. Specifically, some jobs have passed and some jobs have failed. Let's take a look into some of these scenarios. So for example, if we go into this failed pipeline build, we can see that it failed at stage number two, which is a Terrascan stage. In the first stage, the Docker build happened. Let's take a look into what happened at this stage. So at this stage, you can see that the Docker build happened, the image got created, and it's said here that it's pushed into the container registry. Let's check the container registry, if the container image actually got built and got pushed or not. So we can see in the container registry, we can see our image that got created and it got pushed as well. So this was the pipeline which failed at Terrascan, but there are some pipelines builds which have actually passed as well. And you can see here, that they passed, maybe Terrascan found no problems with policy as code. And that's why they were able to pass here. And we could see that the, when, the, when it passes, the GK deploy happens, and we can check that kubectl apply worked, app.yaml got deployed, and a clean, secure, and policy compliant uh, image, uh, image, as well as the uh, Kubernetes cluster uh, got created, and we can check the services and we can see that this particular app actually got deployed. So let's also take a look into now in details what happens when the pipeline failed because of the Terrascan job. So if you go to failed here, you can see that there are certain outcomes that have been uh, reported here, like violated policies, 16 policies being violated. And if we go to the job, we see that there was Terrascan job, which was failing. We click on that job and we see number of different policy violations have been reported. This is where policy as code is working. So before your cluster got built, policy as code is ensuring that your cluster is compliant, your images are compliant and your infrastructure's code is compliant and it's not creating any kind of security gaps because of the policy violations. And this is how basically you can enforce policy as code very, very simply into your pipelines. Very, very simple method to do policy as code, very effective to achieve secure Kubernetes clusters. With this, I'll sign off and appreciate the time that you have spent with me today. Thank you so much.